The first part of this hearing will focus on two Senate bills that are proposing to institutionalize the parameters provided under BSP Circular Number 940, Series of 2017, entitled Guidelines on Deposit and Cash Servicing Outside of Bank Premises. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas has been pushing for this as a means to attain financial inclusion in the far-flung barangay in the country. According to the World Bank, financial inclusion means that individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs delivered in a responsible and sustainable way. Ngunit sa pag-aaral na ginawa ng BSP nitong 2019, lumalabas na 28.6% lamang ang may bank account ownership rate sa bansa. Ano? 28%? 28.6 percent po. Um, at kahit na ito ay tumaas kumpara ng 2017, hindi pa rin ito sapat kung nais nating mapalawig ang mga Pilipinong maaaring maservisyohan ng ating mga banko, lalo na yung mga nasa kanayunan at lugar na low income. The second part of today's hearing will tackle three bills that are pushing for the protection of the remittances of our modern day heroes, ang mga kababayan nating overseas Filipino workers or OFWs. Base sa datos na nakalap ng Philippine Statistics Office noong 2019, ay nagkaroon ng humigit kumulang na 2.2 million na OFWs sa iba't ibang bansa. Meanwhile, BSP said that the personal remittances that came from these overseas workers reached a record high of 33.5 billion in the same year. This figure is more or less consistent as 2018 saw 32.2 billion, while 2020 still delivered 24.3 billion in spite of the raging pandemic. Sa laki ng ambag ng mga OFWs sa ating ekonomiya, nararapat lamang na bigyan sila ng karampatang proteksyon pagdating sa kanilang kinikita. And this precisely is the objective of the bills pending before our committee. They want the amount remitted by OFWs to be free from exorbitant, if not usurious interest rates and prohibitive banking fees. Especially in this time of a global pandemic, it is truly unconscionable to subject our OFWs to such an inequitable ordeal. Finally, the third part of this hearing will focus on Senate Bill Number 2139, which proposes significant amendments to, a certain pro to certain provisions of the Charter of the Philippine Veterans Bank, or PVB. It should be noted that the original Charter of PVB, PVB was drafted way back in 1963. Igit limang dekada na ang nakalipas mula noong maisabatas ito. Thus, many of the proposed amendments here are attempts to align, realign the same with the more recent laws such as the General Banking Law of 2000 and the Revised Corporation Code, among others. The measures, of, the measures objective is to increase the bank's future viability while paying homage to the selflessness given to the country's veterans and retired military personnel. Our brave soldiers deserve nothing less. Before I yield the floor to my fellow senators or senator who are joining us today, may I request the committee secretary to read the names of our resource persons. Uh, but before that, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our hardworking majority leader, um, Senator Frank Drillon. Good to see you again, sir. Uh, correction, um, I am the minority leader, not the majority leader. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, it seems... <laughs> We get, that's really a debatable uh, <laughs> assertion. Um, anyway, I would like to ask uh, my correct, a correction. I stand to be corrected. Our hardworking minority leader who is loved by the majority as well. Um, may we ask the secretary to please read the names of our resource persons and their designation. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Senator Dillon. Uh, we have the following resource persons from the, department of, okay. from the Department of Finance, uh, Ms. Annabel Magno, 
uh, from the develop uh, from the fiscal policy and planning office and we also have director Valerie Brion from the Department of Foreign Affairs we have Mr. Joselito Chad Jacinto special assistant office of the undersecretary for multilateral and international economic relations and Ms. Joarlin Espiritu uh, legislative liaison staff from the Department of National Defense we have Mr. Ernesto G Carolina administrator of the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office Attorney Rolando D. Villaflor, Chief of PIVAO Legal Affairs Division. Attorney R.J. C. Lim, Department of Distributive Liaison Specialist of the DND. Attorney Raymond Zenon Palmera, Attorney 3. And EVP General Mon Santos. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Attorney Cheryl Carbonell, Assistant Director, Consumer Protection and Advocacy Bureau. From the, the, from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Attorney Arifa A. Ala, Assistant Governor, Financial Supervision Subsector 3. Attorney Rosilio O. Prado, Director, Financial Supervision Department 8. Ms. Ellen Joyce L. Suficiencia, Director, Financial Inclusion Office. Ms. Maria Cynthia M. Season, Officer in Charge, Supervisory Policy and Research Department. Attorney Dennis A. Gamaya, Acting Deputy Director, International Operations Department. Ms. Anna Rowena G. Imperial, Acting Deputy Director, Financial Supervision Department 8. Ms. Rosel R. Manalo, Acting Bank Officer 6, Department of Economic Research. Mr. Jade Eric Redoblado, Bank Officer 5, Department of Economic Research. Ms. Rosalie M. Fernandez, Bank Officer 5, Department of Economic Statistics. Attorney Alexis M. Cervantes, Manager, International Operations Department. Ms. Maricel C. Sevenorio, Manager, Financial Supervision Department 8. Ms. Mary P. Santos, Bank Officer 5, Department of Economic Statistics. Mr. Jacobin Fermin V. Ambrosio, Bank Officer 2, Department of Economic Statistics. Ms. Maria Angelica B. Villena, Acting Deputy Director, Department of Economic Statistics. We also have from the BSP Support Group, Attorney April Michelle D. Salamatin, Legal Officer 4. Attorney Ann Caroline C. Bugayong Cruz, Legal Officer 3. Attorney P.B. Samantha S. Alianige, Legal Officer 3. They are, they are from the Office of the General Counsel and Legal Services. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Attorney Marie Gretchen Mondragon, Action Lawyer, Office of the Commissioner and Law and Legislative Division. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney Gerardo Artan Jr., Securities Review Council, Office of the General Counsel, and Attorney Christine Dorothy Leal, Securities Council II from the Corporate Governance and Finance Department. From the Anti-Money Laundering Council Secretariat, we have Attorney Mel Georgie B. Rasella, the Executive Director. From the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration, we have Ms. Jocelyn Ohapal, Director 4. From the Philippine Veterans Bank, we have Mr. Roberto de Ocampo, the Chairman, Mr. Renato A. Clarabal, the President and COO, and Attorney Federico A. Manalo, a Director from the uh, Philippine Veterans Bank. From the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines, we have Mr. Win Sapian, Consultant. From the Bankers Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Benjamin P. Castillo, BAP Managing Director, and Mr. Arnel N. Almaden, BAP Associate Director. From the Kabalikat ng Migranting Pilipino Inc., we have Mr. Luther, Luther Calderon, the President. From the Veterans Federation of the Philippines, we have BFE veteran Roberto C. Fernandez, the Regional President for NCR of the Veterans Federation of the Philippines. Uh, from the Secure Connection Cybersecurity Team, we have Ms. Grace Mirandilla Santos, together with Gamaliel Pascual, Lito Alberia Jr., and Nino Gutierrez. That would be all for the meantime, Madam Chair. Thank you to our secretariat. Um, does our minority leader have an opening statement? Or I, I will just raise the statements. Of, uh, I will I'll raise these uh, policy issues when we ask questions. Thank Chief. you, sir. Uh, perhaps we can begin with uh, BSP. 
Our question would be, of course, we are all in line with you. We agree that financial inclusion is key also to, to, to grow our banking sector and eventually our economy. Um, would, would you please explain how institutionalizing the 2017 BSP guidelines will help for financial inclusion in our country? Um, if you have a presentation to make, I would like to remind all of our resource persons, nobody wants to have a long Zoom meeting uh, since we have a lot to tackle, just keep your presentations, questions, and responses short. Let's begin with the BSP. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, and to the rest of the body. Uh, if I may be allowed to share the general comments of the BSP on the Senate Bill Number sixteen forty three, Paul. Go ahead. Um, when, when, you, when you speak, identify yourselves because our screen Our is limited. Response. Sometimes we, we can't see who's speaking and uh, it would be helpful to know. Yes, uh, ma'am. So you're... you're uh, this, is Joyce. Joyce. this is Joyce Sufficient Shapo of the Financial Inclusion Office of the Banco Central. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Sufficient Yes, ma'am. So uh, the BSP supports the objective of the Senate of Senate Bill Number Sixteen Forty Three uh, to establish a regulatory environment for innovation and to expand the reach of banks to remote or rural areas through cash agents. Uh, the regulation on the engagement of banks of cash agents is currently governed by BSP Circular Number Nine Four Zero uh, Series of Twenty Seventeen. Under this circular banks are required to secure prior BSP approval before they can engage third-party entities as their cash agents. More specifically, banks are required at the minimum to adopt clearly defined written policies and procedures and controls for its cash agent operations, including but not limited to cash agent selection, due diligence, and customer care arrangements before they can be granted authority to engage cash agents. These policies are required to be consistent with the standards and requirements set under existing BSP regulations. Let's start my video. So um, regulations, particularly on outsourcing, consumer protection, anti-money laundering, information technology, and operational risk management. Once approved by the BSP, a bank may continuously undertake or implement cash agent operations unless otherwise prohibited by the BSP. So the circular authorizes cash agents contracted by banks to accept and disburse cash on behalf of the bank in connection with uh, the following online self-service customer transactions, including deposits, withdrawals, fund transfers, and bills payment. Cash agents can also perform know your customer procedures as well as collect and forward application documents for loan and account opening. However, the circular does not prescribe the specific criteria and procedures for evaluation and selection of cash agents. Um, it also does not provide exclusivity of cash agency and does not involve itself in the evaluation and selection of cash agents contracted by banks. The framework adopted by BSP under this circular is consistent with its overall regulatory approach, which places greater emphasis on the governance role and responsibility of a bank's board of directors and on the effectiveness of risk management systems. Notably, the circular, as codified in our Manual of Regulations for Banks, provides sufficient guidance for banks intending to implement cash agent operations as a viable business strategy. Uh, the legislators may consider the current framework embodied in the circular as it provides the BSP with flexibility in crafting relevant regulations as well as revisiting the same as warranted. Uh, that's it, uh, Mr. Chair, Ms. Chair, Madam Chair. I have a quick question just for the benefit of the body. Can you please explain to us, give us uh, an example of current cash agents that are already working. Um, are, are, obviously, these are not just individuals. So, so tell us, who are cash agents right now in the current setup? Yes, ma'am. So 
Uh, if I may give us an example, the Cebuana Luwilier Rural Bank, it's a rural bank that has tapped its uh, network of pawn shops across the country. I think those are uh, that totals to a number of 2,500 uh, pawn shop uh, outlets nationwide as their cash agents. So in this, in their pawn shop uh, outlets, uh, a, ba uh, a client uh, may apply for a micro savings account. Uh, that micro savings account is actually a, a deposit account uh, with the Cebuana Luwilia Rural Bank. So this, so, um, for example, Palawan Express, are they also a uh, cash agent? Yes, ma'am. They can be cash agents. of. Uh, there are currently 13 banks uh, that have cash agent operations. Um, I'm not sure lang po, uh, which, which of these banks uh, have tapped Palawan as their uh, cash agent. For example, uh, you have a grocery chain um, that carries, let's say, load for telephones, let's say Globe or, or Smart. Um, can, let's say, the representative of one of those uh, telco companies become a cash agent? Can, can, you, can you bank, let's say, through GCash? So the cash agent is essentially, ma'am, a a cash heavy or a cash rich uh, retail outlet. So that can be a convenience store, as you mentioned. Um, some banks are tapping cooperatives, uh, the cooperatives. There are also, um, so th those types of retail outlets uh, that have liquidity at hand. So they can also uh, service the cash out requirements of the bank clients. Now, who, who does the selection or the accreditation of a cash agent? In the bill, it's the um, it's a B B S P, right? Yes, in the circular, mom, it's the it's the bank itself. The B S P just approves uh, the bank's application to uh, to implement cash agent operations, but we leave the definition of the selection criteria. And as well as their policies on cash agent, um, yeah, selection to the banks. Oh, it's okay. So before you can actually qualify as a cash agent, you actually have to have to, to be connected to a bank. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Okay. So yes, ma for example, I have a store. I cannot just be a cash agent unless I'm aligned with, as you mentioned, Sebuana or maybe BPI or... BDO, Metro Bank, uh, those, those banks, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Unless, now, yes, ma yes. Now, will you, as a cash agent, follow the fee schedule and also the policies of the, the bank or the, the main bank that you're uh, connected with? Yes, ma'am. So your partnership or your agent um, arrangement will be governed by your uh, contract with the, with the bank book. Okay, now, when it comes to monitoring, who will be monitoring um, these cash agents that they're actually not overcharging clients? Will it be the BSP or will, should it be the DTI? So, ma'am, um, under our circular, the bank assumes full responsibility and liability for all acts and omissions of their agents. So, um, we monitor the banks and the banks are expected to monitor and ensure um, compliance of their agents. Okay, so I, I have another question, okay? Because we're, we're talking about um, cash-heavy um, cash agents. Retail outlets. Retail yeah. outlets. Thank, thank you for the proper term. Let's say there's a sari sari store okay, that, that's actually cash-heavy. Um, it's the only available convenience uh, store in that remote area, can they, even if they're not a corporation, just a mom and pop setup, uh, make an arrangement with a bank and then be an authorized cash agent? Yes, ma'am. So under our circular, we did not prescribe uh, the minimum um, criteria for a what can what the banks can uh, the what the banks can tap as uh, their cash agent. So we leave that to the bank. Um, so if this um, if this if the banks are you know in their criteria, they would consider even a barangay certificate a barangay permit as a 
as a, as a minimum required, they would accept that as a registration, a business registration, then, then that should be okay. So we, what, what will define really the onboarding of cash agents is the <laughs> selection criteria defined by the banks. Okay, so that means the bank will assume responsibility uh, for example, um, they ran out of cash, they, they took in, and but they cannot actually um, sustain the withdrawals being done. The, the main bank will have to step in and cover those, right? Yes, ma'am. So the banks can also set um, <laughs> limits, um, transaction limits for uh, each uh, cash agent. So this is also in line with their risk management policy. Okay, so tell me, Anne, enumerate the services that can be done by a cash agent. So um, the cash agent can um, uh, facilitate deposit and withdrawal transactions uh, performed by the customer, of course, on his bank account, fund transfers, uh, bills payment, um, uh, they can also do know your customer and uh, know your customer to facilitate client onboarding. Uh, they can also collect and forward applications for open About loans. loans. Yes, ma'am. Uh, accept and forward loan application documents. Okay. Um, well, those are my questions for now. If uh, our minority leader have additional questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And... Uh, to be candid, this is the first time I am made aware of the cash agent system in the banking industry. But having said that, the first principle that I would like to establish is the cash agent is the agent of the bank, not of the client. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So that the bank, the contracting bank, is bound by the acts of the agent as a matter of law. Yes, yes, uh, yes Senator. Now, uh, let me focus your attention to section 14. Section 14. Uh, <clears throat> section 14, this is on page 7, line 7. If you can focus on that, please. Section 14. I'm focusing on section 14 because firstly, this is a bank. And secondly, you have agreed that the, that the cash agents are agents of the bank. But the, ways, uh, the way section 14 is crafted, uh, it would appear that this principle that the bank, the contracting bank is uh, bound by the acts of the agent is diluted. Okay, first. Uh, you're saying here that the contracting bank is liable for all acts and or omissions of the cash agent, provided such act is within the bounds of the agency. So, uh, did you notice that? Uh, does that mean that uh, um, uh, the, uh, the bank's contracting bank can assert that the act of the contracting agent is not authorized by the contracting bank? And uh, therefore, the uh, tr the uh, the uh, third party uh, would have no one to look to in case of the malfeasance or misfeasance of the uh, of, of, of the uh, uh, cash agent. Um, yes, Senator. So, actually, in the circular of the BSP, it's crafted uh, a bit differently. So, under our circular. Uh, we say that the bank assumes full responsibility and liability for all acts and omissions of mm. its cash agents on bank-related services. That's the only qualifier what we put in the circular. But I, as, you, yeah. as you mentioned but in the proposed bill, um, uh, there is an escape clause, if I yes. can call it that, for the because it, uh, it it has a broader escape clause. But in the circular, po, it, it limits only to bank-related services. Yes, but maybe we can uh, amend that. I mean, we can uh, include in the bill that the liability shall be full liability. In other words, it is the contracting bank who approves who the, who the cash agents are. 
and therefore it is his, it is the contracting boss responsibility to supervise uh, the uh, cash agents. Uh, the cash agent is no different from an ordinary teller. Would you agree yes. with me? Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> an ordinary teller would, uh, would uh, the, the bank would be bound by all the acts of the ordinary teller because as a depositor, I deal with the agent of the bank. Yes, yes, Mr. Senator. So since I deal with the agent of the bank, why should there be a lot of escape clauses like this one? Yes, yeah. So that's why I mentioned for our circular. Um, I think that one uh, is um, as far as consumer protection is concerned, is more consumer protection friendly because. In fact, I would not qualify it by saying in relation to in relation to banking transactions, because a because the acts of the teller, which is the equivalent of the cash agent would would uh, would bind the bank whatever he does or she does so i would have even that uh, even that, uh, bank that related bank uh, the phrase bank related there can, there can be varied interpretations and if we are going to have cash agents which will perform the functions of the contracting bank the 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 uh, Contracting bank should be liable. I mean, should be jointly and severally liable for all the acts of the contracting agent, especially here uh, of the of the bank agent, especially here that the bank agent, I mean, the cash agent is outside of the premise of the bank. So I have that. So we will. So maybe we can. You can suggest language that will uh, amend that proviso. All right. Um, the second one is on line 10 of the same page, uh, the same section. It says, contracting bank shall exercise due diligence to ensure its cash agents comply with applicable rules, etc., etc. The standard is due, is due diligence. Isn't the standard extraordinary diligence? There's a difference in law between due diligence and extraordinary diligence. Again, this is a, uh, the, the, it is not even the central bank who approves the cash agents. It is the contracting bank. So, and here the contract, the cash agent deals to the public. Now, why should uh, why should the uh, why should the uh, diligence required be that only of a due diligence and not extraordinary diligence. In other words, what I'm leading to, ma'am, is that we should we should uh, make the rules clear so that the 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 depositing public will not be held will not be holding the empty bag. We should extract the highest degree of diligence. On this, uh, on, on these cash agents, would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, that's your existing bank circular. Uh, 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 Nine four zero. Yeah, uh, does it? Uh, what, what does it provide? Um, the so the language is similar uh, as far as using the term due diligence for yeah. concerns. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. And if you want legislation, if you want uh, to, to institutionalize the system, I would uh, strongly suggest that uh, instead of due diligence, it should be extraordinary diligence uh, because you are dealing here with the public, with the, the hard earned money of the depositing public and it is the contracting bank which approves the status of the, the, the application of the cash agent. It is not the Banco Central, Liba. The Banco yes, Central sir. only approves the application for the deployment of cash agents, but not the, uh, the qualification of the entity itself as a cash agent. Yes, sir, under a circular, yes. Please. Under your circular. And therefore, that strengthens my proposal that we should extract the highest form of diligence on the contracting bank. Is that, would you agree with that? 
I'm not a lawyer po, sir, but... Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but just as a concept. Yes, but as a concept, yes po. Yeah, as a concept. Yes, as a concept. All I am driving at is that the diligence required of the contracting bank should be no different from the diligence required of an ordinary bank on its tellers. In the yes, sir. Okay. yes, sir. So that's all. Okay, so at least uh, we can amend it. Uh, uh, firstly, that the contracting bank, uh, that, 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 the, that the cash agent is the, is the agent of the contracting bank, not of the depositor. I want that very clear. Number yes, two, that uh, the uh, that that uh, the uh, that the uh, phrase the, the uh, qualifying phrase provided uh, uh, such act is within the bounds of the agency on lines uh, a, uh, on, on section 14 should be amended so that the uh, the uh, liability should be absolute and not qualified uh, by this since these are uh, these are the uh, agents of uh, the contracting bank. And number three, that the uh, consistent with that, uh, uh, the uh, due diligence uh, should be uh, replaced with extra ordinary diligence. Okay. Now, uh, you, the, the, uh, uh, I hope that the good chair, uh, the secretariat, uh, uh, took note of those suggestions, Madam Chair. Yeah. We have, to our good minority leader, we have, and we thank you for that suggestion. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, the, the Chair mentioned in her opening remarks that the purpose of the, uh, that, that only 28.6% of our population who would have access to the banks. Is, is that a correct recollection, Madam Chair? Um, yes, Mr. Mr. Uh, yes, uh, to our minority leader, or yes. that law. That law. And uh, the purpose of the uh, bill is as found on line seven, on page line seven, uh, six and seven, uh, is to quote, allow banks to exponentially expand reach through cash agents and serve a wider client base, particularly in the low income and rural areas. It would, uh, I, it's just a statement and I have no, no issue with that, but uh, how many banks and branches do we have today? Uh let me get back to you on that, sir. I'll just quickly... Because check. the premise is that we do not have enough banks and branches, especially in the rural areas. And this is the principal reason why we have only 28.6% would have access to banks. Um, Miss... Yes. Yes, um, ma'am. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, to our minority leader, I think that part also of the reason which is uh, included in this bill is financial education to our countrymen. Many of our countrymen are not really very familiar with the system. And then the last time we also um, studied the matter, many of our countrymen are intimidated to enter um, a setup, like even in, in the rural areas, uh, when they see a bank, uh, yeah. they feel that they don't have the proper documentation. Hopefully with the national ID system, it will work. And then I think that, um, this will, that's why there's that informal economy of like underground lenders, etc. Uh, because they, even if the terms are not very good, they're familiar with the people that they're dealing with. So I think that the uh, majority of our workers now uh, here, even in the Philippines, send their money uh, to their relatives in the provinces through these Palawan Express and, and also Cebuana Luilia. Um, so I think maybe that's also the reason why uh, this bill uh, hopes to institutionalize the inclusion of these uh, cash agents um, so that there's also direct responsibility from these cash agents to a, uh, a company that has the means and the, the capability to cover those transactions. Um, that's what I can think of. Uh, I think na-intimidate yeah. talaga pumasok sa banko yung 
ibang mga kababayan no, natin. Yes. I have no issue with the need to pass this bill, uh, Madam Chair. In fact, I think it's needed. Uh, and uh, the, to, in my, in, from where I sit, we must strengthen the uh, protection of our people who would utilize the cash agents more than anything else. Uh, and uh, uh, really, uh, it would appear that at this point, it's a little loose in so far as the liabilities are concerned, that is of the contracting bank. That is why I see the need for this law, which would, uh, which would address that issue. I am just uh, raising the premises uh, for which uh, this is bill is being uh, proposed. And I said, as I said, as I my previous uh, questions would really point to the need of this law <clears throat> to provide more protection to our depositing public who would transact with these uh, cash agents. By the way, uh, uh, Madam Sufficiencia, uh, how many uh, uh, cash agents do we have today? Based on our latest figure, 17,000 cash agents across the country, and uh, they are serving close to 79% uh, of our LGUs. Can you say that again? 17,000 cash agents? Yes, sir. And serving how many? 79% um, of LGUs. 79% of... Oh, they cover 79% of the LGUs. Well, LGU, as we understand... Oh, sorry, municipalities. Po. <laughs> sorry about that. Municipalities. 79% of municipalities. So theoretically, at least on paper, we are saying that only 81% of the municipalities in the Philippines would have no cash agents. Um, so yeah, yes. about 21%. Yes, about 21% uh, yes, would uh, have no cash agents. Yes, sir. And uh, it is reasonable to assume that this 21% of these municipalities are found in remote areas where there are really no banking transactions or neg negligible banking transactions. Yes. Now, which really means that, the, that again, I go back, the principal purpose of this should be really to regulate and, 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 uh, and, and uh, safeguard the interest of the depositing public. Uh, I am surprised, uh, Madam Chair, at the number of cash agents operating today. As uh, uh, rough, if there are 4,500 municipalities, you're just talking about what, uh, 900 municipalities who have no cash agents. Uh, and uh, that's, for, if there are 4,500, municipalities, 80% uh, uh, or 20% of that is roughly 900. So that 900 municipalities would now have no cash agents from the testimony. Correct me if I'm wrong, Madam BSP. That's correct, Mr. Chair. That's why, um, Ms. Uh, Senator Drillon, I think that we need to hear from the BSP, how many banks are there? Maybe na overtake na ng cash agents yung number of banks, which is, I mean, if that's the way the consumers uh, deal with the financial system, then I guess we just have to improve the services and also the the liability uh, against uh, cash agents. So, can you do you have that figure now? How many banks do you uh, actually have? Yes, ma'am. Um, if we're talking about uh, total number of banks, but there are sorry. 500, 523 banks, Paul. These are... Uh, These are the, based on head office count, po. But um, for financial inclusion, uh, where we talk about access points, po, um, yeah. we also, we consider uh, branches um, as uh, access points. So... Yeah. For financial inclusion purposes, uh, we look at uh, 
how many, uh, what percentage of uh, our LGUs don't have a uh, banking presence? Uh, Ma'am, so, um, can I, can I, I have a quick question. Okay. 523 banks, uh, these are 523 different companies, so you're talking yes, about a physical branch. Yes, 528 um, uh, actual license site licensed bank so the, so let's say so out of the 523 let's say one of them will have a uh, 100 branches tama yeah uh, a so, total po of uh, 12591 branches okay so 12000 12591 branches and then how many again are your cash agents uh, 17000 po Okay, thank you. So, in other words, uh, Madam Chair, we have already, uh, in effect, 29,591, more or less, uh, deposit receiving outlets in the entire country. And that is why you're saying that 80% of our municipalities are covered. Is that correct, ma'am? I, if I may interpret, um, Senator Dulon, do you, did you come yes. up with that number by adding the 12,591 bank branches and the um, 17,000 cash agents? agents? Yes, the 17,000 okay. cash agents is the testimony of uh, the Bank Banco Central, ma'am. They just... The uh, mentioned that uh, in the course of his uh, of, of her, of her presentation. There are so 70,000 cash agents today. Yes, so, right. so Ms. Uh, Joyce, uh, please respond. Yes, ma'am. So, um, yes, sir. So there are uh, the cash, cash agents over 79% of the LGUs. Uh, but if we're talking also of um, other access points that do cash ins, uh, but not necessarily banks, for instance, uh, cooperatives, po, uh, mm. that will cover 95% um, has uh, of our LGs have at least one access point. Uh, and that access point can co can include the non the non stop and savings loan associations, po, which also uh, accept uh, cash ins, and then cooperatives offering financial services. Po. But uh, uh, for banking presence, yung um, branches po lang sixty seven uh, sorry sixty eight percent po. Yeah, point eight percent. Well, we're just talking here about expanding, about the available uh, uh, network uh, or what you call as access points. Uh, and uh, we are saying 95% of all our municipalities would have one, at least one uh, financial institution which serves as an access point. Uh, from from your testimony, ma'am. Yes, yeah? yes, Mr. Senator. So so now, which really means that we have to uh, in our, uh, we, we, that we should really have policies which should protect uh, those who deal with uh, the uh, with, uh, with with these access points. Um, which strengthens my uh, my proposition that the reason that it is not lack of access points in our country, but really the level of income. If there is no disposable income that you can deposit, you can have the perfect uh, all municipalities, all barangays with access points for financial transactions. Your your savings rate will still be the same because that's the level of poverty that we have. Uh, for example, if, uh, uh, you know, if you look at the statistics on the poverty rate in the country, on the hunger rate in the country, uh, which is uh, according to the SWS, at least 50% consider themselves poor, you can assume that they have no extra income, disposable income 
which they can deposit in these access points. Tama po ba yun? Would you agree with that? Yes, Mr. Senator. So that we should, as I said, I support this bill. But we should stop the pretense that we have to provide more access points because there are more deposits there that are not in the banking system. The deposit, the, the cash that is not in the bank system, banking system is used on a day-to-day -day basis by our people. Hindi ba na, wala mo na silang income. Eh, paano pa silang magkaroon ng savings? So I just want to establish that of record, to put things in the proper perspective. But as I said, I have no problems with this because your, your, your statement that there are uh, 12,591 branches, there are 17,000 cash agents, or a new total of nearly 30,000, plus the uh, co-ops and etc., which covers 95% of our municipalities, really indicate the need for a stronger regulatory system. That is why, Madam Chair, I was pointing to Section 14, uh, which we should strengthen if we are to, uh, to achieve the purpose of this bill. Um, I, I agree uh, to, to our minority leader. I think that with the suggestions that you have put forth, we certainly have to make sure that these cash agents mm -hmm. are capable really of providing the service, number one, and that the depositors or the clients are protected. Um, so if we have to spell out what the safeguard should be, then we will consider that, of course, when, when we submit the committee report with yeah. the cooperation of the Good Senate Minority Leader's Office. Yes, uh, we will, and maybe uh, on that point, we can amend uh, Section 2 on the declaration of policy in order to incorporate that, that uh, principle or that policy that we should strengthen the uh, regulatory uh, uh, environment for these, uh, for these uh, cash agents. Um, <clears throat> okay. Move to the next topic. Um, we already took if, all of if, uh, if there are no more, uh, uh, are there other concerns by our yes, uh, minority yes, leader? Okay. Just, just one more, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> Just to clarify uh, and emphasize this, that the uh, uh, that the uh, that having a cash agent would not need the approval of the Banco Central. It is the contracting bank. Is that correct? Yes. No. So. Yes. So they, yeah, yes, uh, Mr. Senator. So the the bank only gets the approval of the BSP at the start of its cash agent operations. Uh, but the moment it gets the BSP approval, they don't have to secure uh, BSP approval for every cash agent that they onboard. Right. Uh, we're just. I'm just concerned about the responsibility of the bank uh, with your uh, with your statement of fact. The bank, the contracting bank, should be liable to the same extent as if it was the branch of the bank. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. That, that's a good point uh, raised by the minority leader. Correct. Yeah. It should have the same liability as an ordinary bank uh, because uh, uh, they, they transact with the public and they accept deposits from the public. Uh, um, no. Can you, um, Miss uh, Sufrisantia, uh, can you can you give us an example? Uh, how are you uh, granting the the banks that apply to you the authority to issue um, a cash agent license? Uh, what do you ask from them? Do you ask uh, an, a, a, an a, is there an agreement between the PSP and the bank applying for a cash agent to make sure? that those cash agents are covered by the, the 
by the bank if ever they uh, I don't know the exact term maybe the minority leader can help me here for example uh, the PDIC protects depositors so how about for these cash agents uh, if let's say they're not able to cover the the, the withdrawal of a deposit okay ma'am so the it's the circular that governs the the cash agent operations of a I mean, what what circular are you referring circular to? Circular 940, BSP Circular 940, which establishes the guidelines for cash agent operations. Uh, can you and submit? I'm sure we have I, it, but uh, we submit yes, we that to submit. our office. So yes, 940, um, it's a memo circular? It's a circular. Okay, can you tell tell us, can you, can you cite a provision from that uh, 940 that might be able to address the concerns of our minority leader? Ah, okay, ma'am. So uh, let me find that. So under section four of that circular, uh, wait, no, no. So under Section 5 po pala, uh, letter item C, uh, there's a provision um, requiring bank to assume full responsibility and liability for all acts and omissions of its cash agents on bank-related services. But we, have to, we had to put on bank-related services as a qualifier um, on the assumption that these uh, cash agents are retail outlets which uh, may have other commercial activities. Like in the case of convenience stores, well, um, of course the banks cannot be held uh, responsible for, that, uh, for the non-bank transaction. That's why we had to put that there. Well. And then the next statement uh, goes, um, the bank shall exercise uh, due diligence lang po dito nakasulat, Senator, uh, to ensure its cash agents comply with applicable rules, regulations, and policies on AML, consumer protection, bank secrecy, and consumer data confidentiality. Perhaps, uh, uh, Sen Senator Jalon, we can also look at that memo, Circular 940, and see which provisions there we should add into our committee report uh, just to strengthen uh, the position of the uh, of the BSP that banks should be held liable for their cash agents. Yes, ma'am. I I manifested it earlier uh, when I had my uh, my opportunity to ask questions. In other words, um, the bank. Should the contracting bank should be fully responsible for the acts of the agent in the same manner that the bank is responsible for the acts committed by its own employees. Uh, a, 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 a bank inspector, a bank teller, etc. When they present themselves to the public, they are agents of the bank. When the bank agent presents itself to the public, it is the agent of the contracting bank, and therefore uh, the uh, public has the right to, to consider the acts of the agents as the acts of the bank. Except, of course, I would agree with you, non-related uh, uh, malfeasance or misfeasance. Uh, yeah, if, uh, if, if the... Uh, bank agent manager would rape an employee there in the same uh, the the uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the bank contracting bank should that be made liable in the same manner that it is not liable if the same incident happens uh, to a uh, to a uh, to a, to a bank uh, employee but it, it was very simple in my mind just make the bank agent assume the same responsibility as it would assume for its uh, directly hired employees uh, engaged in this kind of activity. That's the overall premise that I have, uh, uh, Madam Chair, for this uh, uh, for this issue. Now, 
a question. Uh, would the bank agents or, or cash agents have uh, the, uh, would accept deposits? Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, they can facilitate self-service uh, deposit transactions for the bank clients. Uh, would the bank, would, would the client, uh, bank agent clients deposit be covered by the PDIC? Yes, sir, because this is a deposit account, a bank account. Okay, would how will it look like? Uh, I'm sorry uh, if I yeah, may just uh, follow up the question. If I make a deposit to a cash agent under, let's say, BDO, do I get a passbook that says BDO or does it say mom and pop? So, uh, with uh, the stories. Yeah, so it will be a uh, a bank um, a bank issued uh, deposit um, what do you call it deposit proof so uh, proof of deposit so um, it can be an ATM not necessarily a passbook book pwede pong ATM pwede pong um, uh, ganun po na uh, it can even be a cardless account if uh, if if that's the business model of the bank but it's uh, and a bank issued um, instrument or payment instrument account uh, transaction instrument and uh, I, you had you had a question earlier madam chair on the basic requirement for a bank applying for a cash agent and it's it's the uh, no, uh, ability it's their uh, electronic banking solution because a key requirement for agent uh, operations and agent transactions is that it should facilitate real time um, recognition of transactions in the books in in the in the books of the bank. So when you deposit po in a, you make a deposit transaction with a cash agent, yung dapat yung deposit nyo po reflected real time sa sa bank po na uh, sa books po ng bank. So, so, that, so talaga, that, this will be in tandem with our program to make sure that all of those far flung areas are actually have internet connection. Yes, ma'am. So it relies really on connectivity. The, the uh, proliferation, the expansion of our agent network is also reliant on the availability of uh, good internet connection. Eh, yun yung problema. Eh. Yung ibang mga remote areas. That's the reason why they don't have uh, these mm -hmm. banks there because they don't have, uh, they're very remote. Okay, well, anyway, um, it doesn't matter because that's just one of the criteria why we're doing this. Um, is also to make it user-friendly to our countrymen. So even in areas with established banks already, they might still decide to go to a cash agent just because they're more familiar or they're more comfortable doing that. But, but again, it's an issue also of connectivity. Yes. Uh, next question, uh, Madam BSP. Would the cash agents be covered by the Anti-Money Laundering Act? Yes, sir. Okay, if they are covered by the AMLA, are they doing, are, are they covered by the reporting requirements? Um, it's the bank that does the reporting, sir. So, because they're using also the system of the bank, actually. Uh, okay, so the reporting is done by the bank. Okay. Yes, but, sir. They are the covered okay, person. That's a practical so. matter. Let's say there is a suspicious account transaction. Yeah. Uh, who determines that and who reports that? It's the it's the it's captured supposedly by the system of the bank, and that's uh, reported by the bank or to the AML. And we, then the yeah. yeah. Senator Gilon, this is actually going to be quite interesting to see, huh? Because no, I mean it's it's really a good um, uh, goal to have. But can you imagine training, let's say, a store owner? Uh, to be able to handle the complexities of banking. Um, so it's really going to, the, the one, the bank that will succeed here is the one that can have the most user-friendly system that complies uh, with regulations. Kasi imagine mo yan, oh, kailangan na, kailangan yung paglumagpas ng 500,000 per day deposit niyan, ire-report nyo kaagad yan. O, oh, di ba yung mga ganun na, well, I'm not saying that uh, they will, you know, be taking in as much cash as that, but it's possible, you know, how some people's minds 
work. Ah. Pwede tayo dito kasi hindi mahalata. Di ba? So, dapat mabilis yung mga banko dyan na makahuli uh, ng mga repetitive uh, deposits that are suspicious. So, again, how will they how will they teach um, uh, agents to comply? Medyo komplikado rin ang banking. Pero anyway, sige, ayan. Problema nila yan. Basta may liability sila. <laughs> For example, uh, Madam BSP, how would the cash agents comply with the know your customer rule or know your client rule? So the so they accept po the the uh, identification documents, but the actual opening of accounts happen at the at the ano po, at the actual bank at the bank po. Not at the point of uh, the agent. So the final decision to open an account to do the onboarding still rests with the bank, but the, the agent facilitates the KYC process. Uh, you, you know, to be candid with you, Madam BSP, I have my very serious doubts about the ability to comply with all these AMLA rules insofar as these cash agents are concerned. Simply impossible. Huh? And, uh, and this exposes a weakness in our system because here you are, uh, there are no limits on the amount of deposits, is there? Uh, sir, that's, uh, that is up to the bank po, uh, based on their risk management policy. Po. So, yeah. yung but, usually po, dun sa mga transactions with agents, uh, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Cebuana Luwilia Rural Bank, they uh, do account opening for their micro savings account, which is a no frill uh, basic deposit account with some restrictions. So, medyo dun po, ano na, uh, may, may um, somehow may controls na because of the type of products that are being offered in, the, in these cash agents, hindi po to yung mga sophisticated products. So like a basic deposit account, um, up to 50,000 lang po yung balance niyan. Uh, and then the, the banks are expected to, to establish controls po in line with their um, AML uh, compliance. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, so there's a limit as to the maximum amount of deposits? No, uh, no ma'am. Uh, I just mentioned, yung dun lang po sa one example of an, a bank with a cash agent operation uh, offers a basic deposit account through their cash agents. And uh, yung basic deposit account po is a type of uh, deposit product that has um, very, ano po, parang no frill siya na account, so simplified KYC, but has a restrictions in terms of limits, balance limits, up to 50,000 lang po. Madam Chair, if I may, this is Attorney Arifa from the Banco Central. Uh, yes, please go ahead, Attorney Arifa. Yes. Uh, in addition to what uh, Joyce mentioned, I'd like to highlight that not all banks applying to operate cash agency can be um, permitted or al allowed by the BSP. We look at the profile of the banking institution. One of the requirements is that the banking institution should not have major supervisory concerns and that they have appropriate systems in place to ensure that the cash agent would be able to um, comply with uh, rules and regulations. And the banking institution is also expected to ensure that the cash agents, because cash agents are their extensions, per extension of their personality, um, would comply with those rules and regulations, including AML uh, regulations, Madam Chair. Okay. Yeah, good in theory. <laughs> very good. <laughs> If it's on, on paper, you read it, it's very good. But when you start thinking of the application, you'll have nightmares, if, uh, 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 if I may say. Now, which brings me to the question, which jurisdictions would have cash agents similar to ours? Marami po actually. So um, Brazil, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, most, ano po, Mara, um, most Latin American countries have agent banking operations, and that's how they uh, really uh, no po, uh, drive their financial inclusion figures mm -hmm. through the cash agents. And most of these cash agent operations 
are uh, led by state-owned banks po. Kasi sila po talaga yung may interest and mandate uh, to reach the rural communities that are not served by commercial banks and the private banks. So in most countries, uh, state-owned banks po ang nangunguna sa agent banking operations. Well, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair, I guess that the questions I have in mind, uh, which uh, I go back to my original proposition, that this law, the bill, should be more of a regulatory piece of legislation. Given the magnitudes and the number of cash agents that we're talking about, and the, uh, uh, the fact that uh, the, the, public, the, the public deals or they deal with the public, uh, and I do not want, and that is why, if I may say, I concur with the good chair, that we should look at, uh, the committee should look at uh, Circular 940 series of 2017, and see and, and adopt it with the, rest, with the additional safeguards that the committee may, may suggest to the central bank, because uh, I do not know if it has happened, but uh, one of these days, baka pumutok ito that nagamit yung mga cash agents as, an, uh, as a vehicle through which uh, transactions are made, which can lead to some difficulties in our financial system. So rather than an encouragement uh, of, of the cash agents system, which is all over the place in the first place, uh, and already we're saying that only uh, 5% of our entire uh, uh, in effect, uh, only 5% uh, of all the municipalities would have no access points for cash transactions, then uh, uh, we should really go into uh, uh, regulation rather than, 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 than uh, more <laughs> encouragement or, or, or development of this uh, system because uh, I, I would like to think that this should be the thrust of the committee report rather than uh, trying to increase the uh, deposit base or the client base, which is already, uh, I would like to think, uh, all covered with 95% of the municipalities having access, uh, access uh, points for our deposit system. So that's my submission, Madam Chair, to the committee. Uh, thank you to our minority leader. In fact, I since it's a memo circular 940-2017 uh, is a memo circular, it can actually be changed. Uh, that's why it's better that's included in the law, whatever safeguards we would like to um, make sure stays. Uh, as we roll out these cash agents um, um, policy deal. <clears throat> anyway. Just, um, just one more point. I forgot that, that very major. Uh, on page two, lines two and three, uh, I would propose to exclude that from the committee report because the matter of rules and regulations is already covered by a subsequent section. Um, I think it's section uh, 15 of the bill. Under section 15 of the bill, uh, this is the more uh, standard uh, uh, provision for implementing rules. Uh, I do not see the point of uh, lines two and three when it says the monetary board may, by regulation, further define or clarify terms used in this act consistent with declared uh, policies, uh, state policies above. Two things. Number one, this is not necessary because there's already section uh, 15. Number two, uh, it opens up the opportunity as our fellow senators would usually complain that the regulation changes the meaning of the law. And number three, uh, we should be, uh, the state policy should be, have, should be better regulation rather than uh, uh, expansion or, or encouragement of uh, the uh, cash agents. We should encourage the bank to branch out rather than have <laughs> cash agents. At least when the banks would branch out, then there is more uh, institutionalized regulation of an activity which is really 
uh, full, which is really to, uh, full of public interest or immersed in public interest, and that is the depositing public. And therefore, the bank should be encouraged to, to, exp to expand its branches rather than <laughs> this uh, cash agents, which is, to me, uh, it's a very loose proposition. And all the statements about by attorney Allah and uh, Miss uh, uh, and Joyce here are, are, are good on paper, but I have my doubts about its efficacy on the ground. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you to our minority leader. Um, now we will go to the second part of our discussion. Uh, this is uh, with regards to the OFW remittance fees. Uh, who would like to make... Actually, let me ask the minority leader. Uh, do you have a lot of questions about this or would you have more questions on the Philippine Veterans Bank? Uh, I just have a few questions, uh, Madam Chair. That, no, because... Take this up. The, just a few whatever, questions. Whatever's easier uh, to discuss, we will do that first. All are hard. <laughs> Such is the nature of this committee, by the way. Anyway, okay, so let, let's begin with the OFW uh, remittance piece. Do we have a presentation from any of our resource persons? Uh, from the BSP? Can you give us an idea um, on the fees now being charged by current banks on remittance fees from our OFWs? Okay, because if nobody can do this, I'm going to have to skip this because how are we going to discuss this if we don't even know the official amounts being charged by the banks? Because what, basically, the intention of this law is very good. If you are an OFW and you are sending money or even a, a worker sending money to your family, uh, you will either be offered a discount, a discounted rate for the remittances, and also protection when it comes to the type of currency being received by the recipient. Like you can, you can specify, uh, I want them to receive it in uh, the original currency to send. Like for example... Uh, dollars and and we see this happen us dollars for example we see this happen if let's say you charge your credit card abroad and you and you say uh, charge in philippine peso and then you you realize that the conversion rate is not fair so you lose already a few peso or a few dollars just by the conversion rate being decided upon by the financial institution you, you are using so right now um I would like to know, for example, how much do commercial banks in the Philippines charge for remittance fees? Do we have anybody who can uh, talk about this or else I'm going to have to defer this uh, uh, bill to another time until we get somebody who can discuss this? Yes. Yes, I agree with you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have questions along the same line. How much, uh, okay, you mentioned, yes, what is the remittance fee being charged to the, uh, to the uh, client, to the overseas Filipino workers. Uh, what is the total estimate of this? And because the proposed bill also grants an incentive, ma'am, uh, it, it uh, provides for an incentive through a really discounting, if I recall correctly, the bill. A discount on the, uh, on the remittance fees being paid uh, that, that's the way I understand it. Maybe I'm wrong. That's why we need the resource person here. Uh, for example, yeah. 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 For no. example, if the remittance fee is just theoretically 100 pesos. Now, uh, is it the intention of the bill to provide an incentive by providing for a discounted uh, remittance fee? Is that how I, that's how I understand it? I may be wrong. Yes, yes. Actually, um, actually, to our uh, Senator Drillon, that's precisely what it, this is trying to do. Um, it, uh, what, what the problem is this, um, it's saying that there should be a discount for OFWs remitting money to their families. So one of the questions I have is actually how do we determine 
uh, who the family members are. Uh, for example, what proof do they have to show? Birth certificate pa, ganyan, ganito, ganyan. Because right now, BPI and Metro Bank, this is what they charge. From 150 to 300 pesos and above per country territory basis. Example, Hong Kong. Uh, from 130 to 260. Uh, Japan, from 340 to 900 and above. Uh, then there's also uh, BDO Kabayan Savings. But and then uh, one of the proposals, for example, is that the remittance fees should not be taken out from the money actually being remitted. Remittance fees should be separate. That's one of the proposals. But it's very difficult to continue talking about this. I, this is the bill of uh, Senator Pacquiao um, and also Senator Bong Revilla. Unless we have a... Uh, <laughs> we have Senator Pacquiao and Senator Bong Revilla probably explain what this means. Well, yeah, that, that would be that, that 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 would be nice. Um, ideally, that that should be uh, maybe a perhaps an <laughs> perhaps an opening statement uh, from them. So yeah, for now, I, I think uh, I, I would like the BIR to tell us what uh, 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 the position here because the uh, structure is there is a discount granted but the discount can be a tax deduction. So I think it is import, important to know how much uh, is the collection of remittance fee, what is 20% of that, which will be a tax deduction, uh, which is no longer, or which, which is not taxable anymore because it's a, it's a tax deduction. So how much uh, will that involve in terms of actual uh, reduction of uh, remittance of fees to the government. I mean, what in effect we're doing here in this bill is we are transferring the uh, burden to the government, the burden of that the uh, OFW is otherwise uh, liable for. This is the remittance fee. To the extent of 20% of the remittance fee, that is considered as a tax deduction and as a tax deduction, uh, then uh, the, no taxes will be paid. In effect, we are transferring the burden from the OFW to the government. Nice. I mean, I, I, we endorse that. I am sure that the good chair would endorse that. The issue is how does the BIR look at this? And they will look at this in terms of how much would be our losses in terms of tax uh, revenues. That's very important. So these are data, uh, these are uh, things which we cannot decide on unless somebody can explain to us what this bill is all about. Thank you very much, Madam. Okay, so in, in that case, uh, I is the minority leader in agreement that maybe we should defer this? Yes, okay. we, should defer it. we should defer it until somebody can explain to us what this bill is all about. Maybe the authors can, can explain to us. Uh, yes, and, and also I think that, um, I hope that after the explanation we will be enlightened. Um, and, and I think that it again, uh, in principle, it is a good bill because our uh, yung mga OFW natin nagpapadala ng pera dito. So at hindi lang yon, even our workers uh, working away from home within the country are using this system. So, uh, but we have to have representatives from the commercial banks present also to explain what their fees are currently. Uh, is it uh, justifiable um, for us to actually? Uh, I, I think the later on we can ask the Bankers Association of the Philippines, uh, but then I think we should also have uh, actual members from the different banking companies to be present, as well as the, the BIR and the BSP, if we can ask them also to study this bill and say something about it uh, later on. Because, um, yes, so... For that, we will move on to the next item in our agenda, and that's the Philippine Veterans Bank. Um, we, do we have the chairman of the Philippine Veterans Bank to make a presentation, perhaps? Tell us what this is about. Yes, uh, uh, Madam Chairman, Senator Poe, I'm here. Uh, the, the, the bill basically does two main things. One, it expands the equity of the Philippine Veterans Bank to the prescribed equity that is uh, 
prescribed under the regulations of the EPSP from where it is now to 10 billion, which is uh, what a private commercial bank's equity ought to be by BSP standards. The second is to be able to expand the constituency base of the bank so that uh, from its original constituency of uh, World War II veterans, it expands the meaning of veterans to align with a definition under the law of what veterans are. So that would be World War II and all other veterans who served in other wars, as well as veterans by virtue of their retirement from the armed forces. The, the, as, you, as you will recall, historically, this bank was created uh, to be owned by the veterans of World War II. And uh, it is in a sense to be able to have a continuing, uh, in a sense, um, reflection of the nation's uh, gratitude to the heroes of World War II that gave us our freedom. And also to be able to have a financial institution which can give them continuing supplementary support to that uh, that, that is uh, given uh, by the national government. It has been uh, in existence since 1960s. This bill had been uh, passed through the House of Representatives after several rigorous uh, sessions and hearings, etc. And during those hearings, all the parties involved were represented, the BSP, the Philippine Veterans Bank, the World War II Veterans, the Veterans Federation, and so forth and so on. And all the inputs from them were taken into account and agreed upon, which is why it, it comes as no surprise to me when I saw the Senate bill uh, 2139 that it mirrors Republic Act 8164 since uh, the provisions had been thoroughly uh, discussed. Once the bill is passed, then we would be able to begin our efforts to increase the bank's equity, which would give it a platform for becoming a continuing, professionally managed, private commercial bank. And as I often say, if, uh, if the bank is properly managed, then you would have a bank that the veterans can rely upon. And because it is a, a private commercial bank, while its core constituency are the veterans, it is not prohibited from seeking customers, clients, borrowers, etc., from uh, the general public. Uh, that's the gist of my presentation, uh, Senator. Um, thank you. Actually, we've had a conversation already about this, uh, Mr. De Ocampo, and I appreciate how you're uh, very, very progressive about managing this bank. As, as we've already discussed, it's been decades since the charter has been amended. Now, I, I just want to emphasize also for this body that actually we are expanding the definition of veterans to not just include World War II. Marami na tayo mga veterans na hindi lamang World War II veterans. And in fact, konti na lang ang sa World War II to compare to the other veterans that we have. So um, that's, that's one good point of the amendment of this. Um, number two, also to increase capitalization. Now, I would like you to clarify when you increase the cap capitalization of 10 billion uh, to 10 billion, um, you are going to open this up to other uh, shareholders, right? But, but then you're saying that the control um, will still be with the veterans. Am I correct? Or am I understanding this incorrectly? Uh, that is not uh, explicit. We, when you raise capital, then those that uh, provide the lion's share of capital over time may be in control. Right now, the, the, the bank is 100% owned by the veterans of World War II. When we issue a call for capitalization invitations, then we would, of course, issue a call to the veterans of World War II and their heirs uh, because they do have preemptive rights, after which we will issue a call as well to others. Now, um, I cannot forecast right now uh, what, what the configuration will be, but in the foreseeable future, I, I, uh, it would be still within the majority of the World War II veterans. Well, I thank you for your, your candid response. 
Actually, Mr. De Acampo, how will you differentiate your bank as a veterans bank from other commercial banks uh, with the new setup that you're proposing? It's differentiated from the very definition of its name because it has our vision, uh, uh, Senator, is to position this bank as the primary bank for the veterans, the armed forces, the military personnel, and the uniformed personnel. As no, our, exactly, exactly our, how will you position? Will you give them preference or in yes, terms of, of loans? In terms yes, of, of course. Uh, there, okay, there are uh, provisions. There are provisions in the bill itself, which actually carry over from previous bills, that uh, allow us to provide special grants in aid, assistance of all kinds, medical, etc. Primarily and in fact exclusively for veterans. So a big client like a uh, big corporation uh, may may be borrowing more from us, but they are not uh, qualified to get grants in aid, assistance, and so forth, because they're not veterans. Okay, because uh, the reason why I raised this point is, as we know, let's say the land bank um, is supposed to lend more to our farmers, but right now it's, it's uh, operating more as a commercial bank. And then the DBP is also supposed to give more to MSMEs, but as we know, um, larger corporations have benefited from uh, the funding from the DBP. So with Veterans Bank, for example, uh, a veteran will apply for a loan um, and a non-veteran will apply for a loan. How would you treat the veterans in terms of the loan application? Would they get priority would, or would, would the same conditions apply to all borrowers? Well, in terms of uh, the viability of uh, the project that they're borrowing from, the bank can only treat them on even terms. Being a veteran is not a reason to, to present a project which cannot stand the test of financial viability. However, the fact that they're, that they're veteran would immediately give them priority for our listening to their proposal over say a non-veteran. But you know, you. you in, in, in the context of daily operations, you, 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 don't, you don't sequence these things. Uh, what, what happens really is that we do give a signal that veterans are primarily welcome to come to the Veterans Bank to be okay, So, so sir, for example, in terms of the, the earnings of the Veterans Bank, the, the profits, how much of, uh, what percentage are you allocating for veterans affairs and concerns? Uh, there is an entire section, I think it's section uh, 23 of the law, which uh, provides that in detail, uh, because uh, we are we, we should be providing dividends to the shareholders, and the shareholders are mainly the veterans. Now, uh, according to SEC, um, SEC rules, that, that, lit, that amount of dividends will depend on our degree of retained earnings. You may be aware, of course, that we have not been able to give dividends for a number of years. And the reason for that is because the, the, the bank was not in a position to be giving dividends and the BSP prevented any, any uh, outlay for that, which is precisely why we, we seek to amend the charter of the bank to give it a much stronger equity base, to give it okay. a better chance to be profitable and to provide those benefits that are intended for the veterans. Okay, um, may, maybe uh, we have somebody from the Banco Central who can comment on the position of our... Um, I'm sorry, I just got this. Uh, uh, do we have anybody from the Banco Central who can speak about this? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, this is uh, Attorney uh, Arifa Ayla from the Banco Central. Yes, Philippines. Attorney Ayla, go ahead, please. Yes, the Banco Central supports the initiative to enhance the Philippine Veterans Banks because ultimately this will redound to the benefit of the veterans who are the members of the bank. Uh, we also support the, the initiative to strengthen the capitalization of the bank, as this has been one of the supervisor, su supervisory concerns being raised by the BSP. Um, we also noted that the House Bill uh, number 8164 
um, I mean, the provisions thereof are lifted verbatim into the Senate bill. So we just would like to raise just two points. Uh, first is on Section 5A on the um, increasing of the capital uh, stock of the bank to $10 billion. Um, we know that the um, capital stock will be raised to $10 billion, but it is possible that the capital requirement by the BSP will exceed uh, $10 billion. So to address that particular situation, uh, the, the bill should provide flexibility to the bank's board of directors to increase the capitalization of the bank without amending the bill because it will be very difficult for the bank to again amend the bill just to increase its capitalization. Uh, and next uh, comment is just a minor one because in uh, section 5B, line 13 on page two, uh, there was a mention that the, um, our, the, the um, articles of incorporation when it increases authorized capital stock is being approved by the BSP. Actually, the Banco Central does not approve the same. It merely um, makes favorable endorsement to the Securities and Exchange Commission, and it is the SEC which um, approves the same. So uh, we, in this regard, we propose that we delete the uh, phrase approved by the BSP. So those are the two comments from the BSP, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's very helpful, Attorney Ala. Um, if, if it's possible, please submit your position paper so that we can uh, incorporate that in our committee report. Um, yes, Madam Chair. We will submit you. the position. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney. Um, perhaps our minority leader has some additional points to, to make and questions. Uh, <clears throat> No, uh, I am. I, I am interested and want to follow up the statement of Attorney Ala. Uh, why, sh uh, under the proposed measure, would increases in the capital stock no longer require a government or a legislative action? Uh, correctly, is that is that how I understand it? In other words, future increases of the felt of the capital stock of the. Uh, be of the of the uh, veterans bank uh, will be treated in terms of, of processing it like any ordinary bank, meaning that uh, it is uh, it's submitted to the Banco Central for favor endorsement to the SEC and no longer amend the uh, the uh, charter as we are doing now. Is that correct, ma'am? Uh, uh, Mr. Senator. Um... The, the, the bank can actually um, amend its articles of uh, incorporation. And then, however, um, based on the bill, the authorized capital stock of the bank is up to 10 billion pesos only. So if there's conflict, even if the bank would amend its articles of incorporation and increase it to, let's say, 11 billion, that would contradict the provision of this bill. So yes. uh, the SEC will not approve it. So that's why yes. our proposal is to provide flexibility for the board of directors of the bank to, to increase the authorized capital stock so that in the future, there's no need to amend the law just to increase the capitalization of the bank. I agree. I agree, ma'am, that uh, indeed uh, it should not require a congressional approval just to increase the uh, authorized capital stock. Uh, it should be an action of the board uh, the stockholders and uh, endorsed by the uh, uh, central bank before it is approved uh, and effective by the SEC. Uh, I agree fully with that. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, it will be a very difficult yeah. uh, position for the land bank to take. Now, um, the, the land bank has only... How many? 60, 60 Veterans branches. Bank. Huh? Veterans okay. Bank, Senator. <laughs> you said Land Bank. Veterans Bank. Veterans Bank. I'm sorry. Veterans Bank has only 60 branches? Yes, sir, Senator, that's right. You should, rather than have cash agents, we should have more branches for the Philippine Veterans Bank because. Uh, Need because this has this can provide a better uh, service and better security to our depositors. So 
Uh, first, I want to make it to record, Madam Chair, that I fully support this uh, this uh, uh, bill uh, that would strengthen and allow the expansion of the uh, Philippine Veterans Bank. Uh, <clears throat> now, so the uh, additional uh, um, the uh, uh, the uh, additional uh, requirement, capital requirement, uh, uh, who would subscribe to this, uh, uh, Mr. Ocampo? Uh, right now, uh, Senator, <clears throat> the bank has approximately uh, 2.4, 2.5 billion in capital. And we're going to, uh, uh, by agreement with the BSP, we are going to try to reach 10 billion by the year 2025. We believe that uh, within uh, the foreseeable future, we will we will easily reach five billion by getting three uh, by getting another two billion from um, from those that are going to buy shares of stock of the Philippine Veterans Bank. This will be from uh, World War II uh, heirs, most likely, and and also uh, uh, veterans, since we have already expanded the definition of veterans. Now that will give you a total of approximately 5 billion. We have another uh, 2 billion or 1.5 billion that we can provide by sale of uh, real estate assets, et cetera, of the, of the bank. As you know, most banks do end up with, uh, with uh, assets that uh, they foreclose and so forth, and these are for sale. And then finally, the bank would be profitable if, if they had a platform of equity of that uh, volume. And uh, it, is, uh, it is normal practice for part of, that, uh, of the earnings to be plowed back into a reserve fund for the purpose of uh, contributing to the equity. So that's how we plan to get it done. Yes. Uh, Mr. Diocampo, uh, my impression is that your ability to meet uh, your capital requirements and even on the increase of your of your of your uh, capital stock, would be limited by the uh, limitation of investors that they should qualify as veterans. Is that a correct statement? Uh, no. Um, in fact, we uh, we had expanded it in that uh, in the, in the bill. It, it shows there that it can be veterans of World War II, all other veterans, and the private sector. So uh, we, we, we do have a wide net. So private Which sector. Which is preference, of course. Yeah, uh, we can have investments by the private sector. Yes, I think that's in the bill. Uh, that's in the bill now. Yeah. Uh, but are we assured that this, uh, notwithstanding this uh, uh, additional investors, the bank will remain under the control of the veterans for which it is uh, constituted? Right now, as I explained to Senator Po, it is 100% owned by the, by the veterans of World War II. The, 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 the plan, of course, is to give uh, preference in the initial invitation to capital to veterans of World War II and the heirs and so forth. And, and next preference would be to all other veterans. I think if you're thinking in terms of... Uh, of 10, of, of 10 billion, of which we already have about two and a half in the bag, and we put another uh, an, another equal amount from veterans and World War II veterans, that's, that's, uh, that, that would be at least 51%. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yes, well, we have no other question on this uh, measure. Madam Chair, we fully endorse uh, a committee report uh, we, 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 uh, that will uh, that will endorse for plenary approval the proposed measure. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Julon. I think I see the hand of uh, Yusek Carolina. Would you like uh, to add anything uh, briefly, please? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam, salamat po. Uh, Tagalan po ng mga veterano, gusto namin bumati sa ating uh, Madam Chair at sa ating minority leaders. Uh, we have submitted the uh, position paper po ni Secretary Lorenzana ng ating mga veterano. Kasama po namin 
ang Veterans Federation representing 160,000 strong uh, veterans. Kami po yung sector uh, supposed to be benefited uh, by this uh, uh, proposed uh, law. Kaya masaya po kami. We are uh, the Secretary uh, and we representing the veterans FIBA who uh, have uh, expressed our full support uh, to this law. We look forward to it dahil uh, yung tanong po ni uh, Senator Dillon kanina uh, natatandaan ko po, Madam Chair, uh, there is a provision in the law that uh, assures that at any one time, uh, the majority of the equity should be owned by veterans. Nakalagay po yun sa uh, provision ng law. And uh, we fully uh, support the objectives of the law, which is to expand its capitalization and its uh, equity base, accepting uh, the veterans, uh, the post World War II veterans, uh, Madam Chair. And... Uh, we, we, we believe that the uh, armed forces can contribute a lot in uh, uh, making this a vibrant bank because, uh, Madam Chair, we are the big, one of the biggest consumers in logistics. Ang payroll po namin, ang uh, armed forces, uh, the uniform services, tapos yung uh, pension, pension fund po na laging napapansin ni Senator Dillon dahil talagang lumalaki. Eh, kung meron na pong Philippine Veterans Bank na talagang... Uh, uh, nado na rin po kami. Tapos yung modernization po namin na uh, about 30 billion a year, I think uh, yung potential po na may papasok ng sektor namin ay talaga po uh, napakalaki. So, meron lang po lang kami isang uh, concern, Madam Chair, kasi hindi rin namin pwede isang tabi yung uh, concern ng aming uh, mga veterano. Uh, dalawa, I have uh, a chart here. Gusto ko lang po namin uh, ipatanggal Ito pong uh, insertion sa Section 23B. Eh, tinatawag ko pong insertion na uh, Madam Chair kasi wala po ito sa original bill, sa original law na ating ina-amend, yung pong Republic Act 3518, which is the uh, uh, Charter of the Philippine Veterans Bank. So, idinagdag po nila ito, yung naka-highlight, including maintenance and improvement of its offices, buildings, etc., Nung pong Board of Trustees of Veterans of Fort Worth II. Ang reason po kaya namin pinapatanggal, uh, nandito po sa next chart, ay kasi po uh, gusto po namin mapabilis ang approval ng uh, batas na ito. E makakasagabal po ito because of legal, uh, legal questions po ng ating mga veterano. Number one po, uh, yung pong 2.4 hectares na ininsert nila, e eh, pag-aari po nakaproclaim sa Veterans Federation of the Philippines. And uh, yung pong proclamation na yon uh, is a power vested on the president and uh, meron pong provision na uh, independence ng uh, uh, separation of the powers of the executive and the uh, uh, legislative. Yung pong uh, pag-reclassify at pag-proclaim ng mga lupa in the public domain eh nasa powers po ng president. So pag ilagay po natin to sa insertion na to, I, uh, in effect, we are reallocating the 2.4 hectares uh, contrary to what the President has already proclaimed. Uh, please note po that the insertion states that the maximum limit may even be increased upon mutual agreement between Veterans Bank and the Board of Trustees of Veterans of Fort Worth II. When in fact, the property uh, is proclaimed to be a fee. In other words, eh, para pong ano to, yung dalawang hindi may ari, eh, pwede sila po ang magkaroon ng... Uh, kapangyarihan dun sa lupa na yun. Pang pangalawa po, itong non-impairment clause. Ito pong uh, 2.4 hectares na ito ay covered ng uh, kontrata, meron pong memorandum of agreement, between the BAP and the Board of Trustees. Eh, very clear po sa Constitution, mga kontrata po should be allowed to take uh, their due course at hindi po dapat uh, uh, mag intervene unnecessarily ang state. But, okay, um, actually... You said, Carolina, uh, maraming salamat po. We actually received this position paper. Um, definitely, this is very important to consider. I would like to, um, with your permission, I'd like now to hear the comments of the Veterans Bank uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Ocampo, with regards to this, uh, deleting this insertion. Thank you, sir. Uh, Senator, this particular provision had been thoroughly discussed during the deliberations in Congress. And uh, I don't know uh, what insertion means because uh, that was 
already in the original House bill offered by the authors, which was uh, uh, then transformed into Republic Act uh, 86, 81, 64. So we had covered these grounds. Now, having said that, when we discussed this, when, when, when this was originally discussed, the original uh, bill authored included all land that was under Proclamation 192. And I think you've got, you have copies of these. But after deliberations, we agreed to reduce it to just those, uh, the, the, the properties that are covered by a memorandum of agreement between the Board of Trustees and the VFP, which memorandum of agreement was signed in May 2011 and has a period of 40 years. Now, uh, that memorandum, uh, Senator, uh, was an agreement in order to establish facilities and uh, buildings, etc., for the purpose of enhancing uh, veteran welfare. Those buildings are actually there, okay? There, there is a museum, there are the offices of the veterans, there is an auditorium that the veterans use, and there is a medical center that provides medical assistance to veterans. And therefore, everything is in keeping with what are the uses agreed upon for that place. Now, uh, that is all under Section 23, Senator, because Section 23 is entitled the distribution of net profits. And I think what was intended is not to have a very general uh, statement about how one distributes profits, but in the interest of good governance and professional banking, to be able to more clearly define what, what is being spent for. Now, over the years since 2011, and probably even before that, the, the bank has been providing assistance for those buildings and premises that are covered under memorandum of agreement. And we wanted to make sure that uh, un, under the provisions of what's, what's to be pro given as a net profit, it is specific, not general, and that we can track where the funds are going and that they're going for that purpose. Okay, um, Senator Drillon, uh, I, I thought I saw him raise his hand earlier or not anymore. Yes, um, I am, I'm just struck by the uh, presentation of uh, Undersecretary Carolina, particularly when he asserted that the proposed uh, section 23, is alien and is a rider uh, to the present bill uh, because it has no relation to the present bill. Uh, that's, uh, that, uh, there it says, the insertion is not relevant to the purpose of Senate bill number 2139. I take it to mean that uh, section 23 has nothing to do with or is totally alien to the purpose of the bill and therefore is a rider because uh, uh, it contains a subject not related to the bill. Uh, I would, because this is a constitutional issue. Um, I, I do not see any uh, extensive uh, uh, discussion on this, but this, struck, this strikes me as a, uh, an important issue. Uh, would you, Sec Carolina, uh, submit a position paper which would uh, elaborate on the uh, on this uh, issue of relevancy uh, and submit it to to, to the committee. Uh, with your permission, yes, Madam uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Sir uh, Minority Floor Leader. Gusto ko lang po idagdag uh, ang pinagagalingan namin. Gusto po namin mapabilis ito, pero dahil po hawak na ng korte. Yung po yung pang-apat ko. Meron na pong uh, ipinayon na kaso ang uh, Veterans Federation against the Board of Trustees sa uh, Tagiig Court. And yung uh, Board of Trustees, meron na rin pong pinayon na TRO. And uh, so, 
makakadali po yun dahil hawak, the, the court has taken jurisdiction on this issue. At totoo po, ang sinata, ang sinata, tinatawag po namin rider yung idinagdag. Hindi naman po yung uh, section na uh, uh, 23 kagalang-galang na Senatora Dilon. Ang sinasabi po namin, doon sa original law, nandito naman po yung section 23. Pero in-insert nila, dinagdag nila itong dulo. At sa tingin namin, walang kinalaman po doon sa pinag-uusapan natin na increase the capitalization and uh, expand the uh, ownership base of the bank or the viability of the bank. Ito po talaga, hindi po tabaho ng banko kasi kami po, that's where I'm coming. Kami po ang na nananagot sa kapakanan ng mga veterano. Hindi po ang Philippine Veterans Bank. We take care of the World War II veterans. Natatandaan po ni Senator Dilon. Kasama po kayo sa nag-approve yung World War II veterans. Tinaasan ninyo yung kanilang pension to 20,000. Yung ordinary veteran, 5,000 lang. Kaya the state, uh, hindi po tayo nagkukulang sa taking care of uh, the World War II veterans and their uh, uh, descendants. Ito pong section 23 is enough na po na pagkilala dahil uh, nakalagay dyan po yung uh, allocation of the net profit at eh, 20% of net earnings pupunta na po sa kanila in terms of grants and aid. In-insert lang po nila ito, dinagdag nila na isama yung 2.4 hectares na covered po ng memorandum of agreement. Okay, um, th Opo. thank you. Thank you po, Yusa Carolina. Actually, uh, at face value, we see your point. Um, I think hindi naman to makaka detract doon sa intensyon ng batas na to kung sakasakali na palawigin ang kapital ng Veterans Bank. So, I think that we will just get a copy of this and then we will study it and, and see if this will not actually uh, render the bill uh, useless without this bill. Because if it's um, in the jurisdiction of the court, we, we agree we might run into problems. We have to look at this case um, more extensively before making a decision. And then we will uh, include that in the committee report. If our minority leaders in agreement, uh, maybe yes. this particular yes. provision, we, yes. we shall set aside. Yes, uh, I agree because really, um, I am not familiar with uh, with uh, this uh, issue, and the best that's why I asked for a position paper from both sides, so that if the committee, in its good judgment, will deal with this, let's deal with this in the manner that is consistent with the provisions of the constitution. Okay. Um, so in that, with that, I think that um, we all agree that we, well, both senators present here today are in support of this bill to increase the capitalization of the Veterans Bank. It's uh, long overdue. And we believe that uh, the more, uh, there will be more potential of service, not only to our veterans, but also to the, to the economy as a whole with the expansion of the Veterans Bank. But we have to be, we have to tread lightly when it comes to certain provisions that might come into conflict with uh, pending cases in court. Because again, we cannot assume uh, giving authority to something that is within the provision of the court. So with that, uh, we will um, adjourn this hearing and we will work uh, to come up with a viable committee report that will hopefully pass this bill. Again, when it comes to the bills on the remittance discounts for our OFWs, we will await uh, the presence of the main authors uh, to explain, um, or, or perhaps if, if they cannot make it, uh, we will have to expand uh, in the invitation to commercial bank representatives to explain what the current charges are uh, for the OFWs. I would also like to request uh, data from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to please submit to our office uh, the current charges on average by the banks and, and the fees that they generate and also the BIR to comment on the possible tax incentives given to the banks that will comply with the law if, in, if we, we pass it. So with that, I'd like to thank the minority leader, our resource persons for your presence here today. Um, Maglunch na po kayo. Uh, this hearing is now adjourned. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator.